Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Welcome back to another edition of Issues in Education, Mondays during the Noon Report. We spotlight the issues impacting our public schools with the one and only Dr. Ralph Kerr at the Teaching and Learning Institute. Ralph, welcome back to the program, sir. Our last Issues in Education of 2021. Hard to believe the year is nearly done, but here we are, sir. There you go. That's true. Well, the time goes fast. It That's sure, sure does, and Christmas will be here before you know it, so don't miss it, folks. But we got a <laughs> lot to, uh, to discuss, and we're going to just begin today by looking into next year, because in June of next year, Ralph, there is a huge Supreme Court decision on school choice. Uh, this is kind of uh, a wonkish policy thing. We won't get into the weeds on that, but what it's about is a 150-year-old law in Maine that lets parents access taxpayer money for private education. A lot of folks are going to be watching that case in June. Do you think the court will uphold this tuition program, and what will it mean if it does? Well, I have no idea whether they will or not, but my own opinion, and you're on to something that's going to really not make me any friends at a nice Christmas time, but the Constitution guarantees a free public education for all children, but that has to be delivered in the public school setting. And I know the argument about that is that, well, you know, everybody pays taxes, which supports the public school. Why should parents who choose to send their children to other schools then not be able to get into that money in order to pay the tuition? Well, I will hold to the Constitution that says that the free public education needs to take place in the public school. And so my hope would be that the Supreme Court would strike that situation down Mm -hmm. and that they would no longer be available to use taxpayer money to support private education. Yeah, and this is a really complicated case. And we, as we mentioned, won't get into the weeds on that, but apparently this affects Mainers. I don't know what they call people in Maine, but uh, we'll call them (laughs) that. Mainers who live in small towns. Uh, And it's a 150-year-old law. So we'll see how that goes in June. But we respect your opinion on that, Ralph. Well, hey, uh, school closures are ticking up. We saw what happened last week at Cornell. Um, more than 1,100 cases there. That Ivy League school virtually shut down now. The first week of December, Ralph, there were about 2,500 schools nationwide shut down. And when you compare that to uh, just uh, before Thanksgiving, there were only 400. So uh, the trend is not our friend here. What does your gut tell you? Uh, maybe I shouldn't ask your gut. I'll ask your brain. But what, do, what does your brain tell you? <laughs> as far as the prospects of uh, schools going to uh, remote learning here? Well, as I've said over and over again, I hope that does not happen. And even though there may be 2,500 school districts that are shut down now, there are 17,000 school districts in the country. But uh, the fact is, a Zoom school is not near as effective as in-person learning. And I hope that after the Christmas break that we will see live, in-person instruction, and not a return to Zoom school. Well, hey, what a year it's been, Ralph, from uh, the critical race theory, those are three words we're not going to soon forget, to the parent revolt at school board meetings in Loudoun County, Virginia, to this bus driver teacher shortage problem, so many issues in education in 2021. What do you think of the biggest challenge is facing our public education system going into 2022? Well, I've already alluded to it, and that is the fact that we need to have a really strong assessment of where students are in terms of their learning, and then really help the teachers figure out how are they going to take those students, some of whom are really significantly behind now in their learning, and how are we going to make any attempt at all to catch them up to the levels that they should be. I think the testing programs are going to be really important. How to deal with the wide discrepancies of ability that students are going to have, which has been exacerbated through the COVID time, 
is going to be the biggest challenge, although there are plenty of others as well. Well, hey, that is all the time we have uh, this week and this year. It is our last show of the year, and Ralph, we just well, from family life to you, we just want to say thank you for standing up for our teachers, our students, our public schools, and we wish you a very Merry Christmas, sir. Thank you, Bob. It's been my pleasure to be with you again this year, and I do want to take a minute to wish all of our listeners a very blessed Christmas and all the very best in 2022.